Hey everyone, it's Stephen and John from Davenant European Martial Arts School. Wanted to come back, we're ready for a new year. We are looking forward to getting some great content out here for you and today we're actually going to be answering a question that we got from one of our previous videos. One of our subscribers, Eric Brooks, asked on a previous video what we could do about two tomahawks. Well, my first thought with that was, well, you'd use it like a screamish sticks. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized, no, you can't. Because of the weight, and they're a little bit shorter, and you've got the heads at the end, they're not quite going to move like a screamish sticks. You'll have the same idea, but the weight and the hooking implements are going to make it different than straight sticks. So we want to do a real quick look at double tomahawk versus two different weapons. We'll start off with John using the cutlass, then we're going to move to the half pike. So why don't you grab the half pike? The half pike is called a half pike because it's only 8 foot long as opposed to a pike which is 16 to 18 feet long. So the half pike would be seven to eight feet long. This is the predecessor of the boat hook that's used today. And the pike is great for taking people out of the uh, rigging or from stopping people moving from one ship to another, but not too long that it's completely unwieldy on board the deck of your ship. So we're going to look at double tomahawk versus the half pike as well as the cutlass. So let's go ahead and get started. The tomahawk, whether it's one or two, is going to have the same cutting pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, they're the same cutting patterns. As I come in, I'm going to use this, if I've got two hawks, to be completely honest, I don't know why I would have two hawks. I usually have mixed weapons, hawk and knife, hawk and cutlass, hawk and hanger, something, or, si or a single hawk. But, let's say I'm, I've boarded onto John's ship and I'm trying to make my way to that side of the ship. He's trying with all his guys to get to where we're coming on to make sure that we can't take his ship. So as he comes in, his first strike is most likely gonna be a one or a seven because he's just swinging down at me with everything. And if I try to do this, he's just gonna cut right through it and drive my own spike into my chest. Technical term for that in naval terminology is bad. We don't want that to happen. So as this comes in, I'm gonna give a double weapon, but then it's gonna be a transfer or a hook with a drive into the throat. And then he's gonna stumble because I just broke his jaw. So let's do that again. Okay. So he comes in, hook, flip it around, drive into the throat. He goes off. That also leaves me in a place prepared for his buddy who's coming right in behind him because I can step on behind and that's where now in our previous videos we talked about using slap parries. Can you give me a one? Mm -hmm. I can slap parry with a four. Right? Yep. I can slap parry with a six. And it can be at the weapon. Do that again or at the hand if he doesn't have a cage on it. I can use this also as an attack. So I just uh, hooked him out here, broke his jaw, his buddy's coming at me. I've stepped out of the way, uh, actually I'm going to step into the blow, so I step out of the way and slap parry the elbow. So just hold up your sword for me. Yeah. I step out of the way and give that to his elbow. 
he is not using that arm until that elbow heals. I'm not worried about using the head of the axe or anything like that. I'm using the mass of the weapon. It's funny because when I teach hawk classes, I'll have people come in and they'll ask, hey, can I bring this tomahawk? They've never done any work with it before. But they'll say, can I use this tomahawk? Don't worry, it's dull. My answer to that always is a dull axe is still an axe, so it doesn't really matter. If you give a slap parry to his elbow, you are going to get his attention. Oh yeah. And then he's going to be thinking about the pain in his arm. So let's go through that again real quick. The initial attack comes in. We give a hook, uh, we give a hook, and now all, both of these are straight up and down. And I want it that way, because if I go in here, yes, I can do that, but now I run into potentially a problem, and there's nothing to say that he's not going to, oh yeah, bad things are gonna happen to me. I can do that, but that's not my choice in this instance. I want both heads up so I can take it around, step in to break his jaw, so that when his buddy comes in, I can step underneath with a slap parry to his elbow, and from there, just because I need to make sure that I get his attention, I'm gonna hook his neck and drive him into the other one. Because I can. So, so, both of the opponents. Okay. The initial one comes in, cover, hook, break the jaw. Second comes in, step underneath, parry, hook, drive it in. Now, because I've got this beak, let's switch sides. Mostly because it entertains me. <sighs> both, right. both opponents? Both, both opponents. Coming in. One. Hook, break the jaw, he comes through. Step underneath, slap parry. Hook. Now that beak is driving right into his neck. And just to make sure I get as much damage as I can, I hook it there. But now it's stuck in his neck. It's not going to go into his spine because it's not long enough. No. But I can use that to rip it Ooh. out. Ooh. He's done fighting me. I'm going to go find a corner now. With the amount of gross damage done to the structure, I don't think you could even do that. I don't think I'm going to be able to Because I'd hook, anywhere. I would hook the, the carotid, my carotid and the trachea. Yep. This is, I'm again, down where I am. technical term, bad. Let's do that again. Okay, both? Both. One, cover that to give me room to step in to break his jaw. He comes in. I cover that just to step underneath it with a slap parry to his elbow to break that. That leaves this axe here. I step forward and drive it in. Now I just, with that haft, hit him in the trachea. He's gonna probably fall backwards. There's that hook. Then I drive it in and rip it out because I need my weapon free. Do you agree? Yes. It goes quick and it's devastating damage. Can we do it again? One more time. <laughs> yeah. All right. So he comes in. Boom. Slap. Hook. Push it in. Rip him out. And I'm ready for my next guy. Real quick use of double hawk against cutlass. Effective. Very. Not pretty, but effective. What do you say we move from this one to the half pike. I say it gives me a better chance. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh boy. So now we're ready for the double hawk versus the half pike. That's a lot of stick with a sharp point on the end. Be unpleasant. Now, anybody who's ever fought against a spear knows that all you need to do is get past the head. The problem is if your opponent knows how to use the spear, they can choke up on the spear, and now they've got a dagger. Because if I come in and I try to hook that, yeah, no good for me. 
this is where I need to make sure that I'm inside his point and the only way I can do that is cover with both weapons and if I'm coming in hard and fast he's probably just trying to stab me so he can and finish the fight do you agree I would so as I come in right, I'm coming in I'm gonna hook that but I know he's gonna pull back that's why I hook that and then break his wrist you all right good so again I come in hook he retracts break his wrist, drive it in, stomp his knee, and move on. You all right? All right, so. I'll win this one. We, I'm coming, rah! Oh, you gotta pull I that gotta back. I gotta pull that back, yeah. If he doesn't pull it back, I can still break his wrist. Yep. You all right? Good. Oh, oh, wait, I missed. Rah! Stomp his knee and still move on. You good? <laughs> Again, you have to get past the head. But understand that if they know how to use this spear, you're gonna win this one. I'm coming in. If I don't have something else ready, I'm just gonna run onto his point. Oh, look, I caught that. Does that do me any good? No. Go ahead and take it. Yeah, well, I would slide this hand up. Yeah. Because, yeah, now he's got a dagger. He's yep. just turned it into a dagger. That's what we can do with the spear. Unlike fighting with the spear on foot, on terra firma, we're gonna, not going to be using cuts and big transfers and things like that. There's a lot of rigging. And if he tries to pull it back or use the cue, the butt end on me, well, he just took out a couple of his own friends, and if you hit somebody with a spear, they cease to be your friend. So I know this is going to be in this line. He can cut with it, just with a quick chopping action to the head. Right? And that's where, if he does that, let's do that slow, I can come in. Oh, look at that. I missed this bottom one. But it doesn't matter because I can still hear and then leave and just work my way through. If they're using a spear or a half pike, understand that all they need to do is shorten their grip on it and now it becomes a dagger. That means I need to get past it and make sure that it's going to be more difficult for him to grip his weapon. Another option, if I can't quite get to the wrist, he comes in and I cover that and he retracts, I'm just gonna chop that thumb. Again, a dull ax is still an ax. Yep. I may not cut that thumb off, but I am breaking that sucker. And if I don't, can't use my thumb, I can't properly grip that the spear right. to be able to use it. That's not to say he can't grip his spear. In fact, most of our actions in grappling do not use the thumb. The problem with using no thumb on a weapon is it's more difficult to control it because of the leverage. Do you agree? Yes. With that, we're going to close up. And Eric, thank you for your question. Yeah, thank you. Love getting these kinds of questions. If you have something you'd like to see, please post a question on one of our videos and we'll happily answer it for you. If you liked what you saw, please hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bar. If not, I'm just going to keep hitting Johnny in the chest. Please. Okay, maybe not. But thank you for joining us today. Is there anything you'd like to add to this? Um, just as always, you and Hawks, man. <laughs> Usually when I teach, I'm in my... Uh, more professional. When I get the hawks out, I let my violence come out. I've noticed. I love playing with these things. Um, so actually mine is once again looking at environment. Uh, it's such a huge impact on tools that you use. Um, when I use a spear, even the guy at the, the half pike length here, um, it's a very mobile tool with me. I don't always keep my point at my opponent. 
I may keep my edge in alignment because I'll throw it as a cut. But again, if you look at an environment, you have a lot of hanging equipment to the side above you and to the sides of you that are not just your partner, but ropes attaching to the um, to the to the bottom there, to the sides yeah. of the whole thing. Uh, this is, well, I can see this is a useful tool keeping people once you get people to that corner. You have to really think about the super small fine motion that we've talked about a lot with this. Right. So. And the half pike, from the standpoint of boarding actions, was used more to keep people off the deck or from jumping from rigging to rigging. So it's not something that you're going to find a lot on deck once the fight has engaged. But that's not to say that you won't. So that's why I like to point this out. With that, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Uh, just one more for the road. Thanks, everyone. Take care.